In our second video of genetic modification and biotechnology, we're going to continue our discussion of uh, these two topics and really start to look at um, how we've been able to use biotechnology to, to change uh, many of the, the organisms that live around us, um, most often for our own benefit. And the first topic that we're going to look at is that of a clone and cloning. Uh, a clone uh, does actually happen naturally in nature. Um, for example, garlic is a, a single garlic bulb um, through photosynthesis is able to, to produce energy to grow a group of bulbs that are genetically identical. So that's creating a clone. Uh, strawberry plants would also be an example of a clone. Um, and so we actually do see in nature clones be produced. Uh, this would also be an example where this could occur through asexual reproduction. And a clone, a definition of a clone, is a group of a genetically identical organisms or a group of cells derived from a single parent cell. A genetically modified organism is one that uh, is, a, is an organism whose genetic material has been altered by genetic engineering techniques. And an example of this would be glowfish. You've probably or hopefully maybe seen glowfish before. Glowfish are fish that have had a sequence of DNA, a specific gene that causes them to glow inserted into their genome. Uh, this, this glowing gene is often derived from jellyfish or other marine creatures, sea anemones sometimes, different types of coral. They have a gene that produces a glowing color. And if this gene is, uh, is extracted and inserted into the embryo um, of a, uh, originally zebrafish is what was first used to make these glowfish, uh, the fish are then able to glow and have offspring that are able to glow because that gene gets passed on. We've been doing this for a, for a number of years now with different crops and it's becoming more and more common and a, a topic of discussion. Um, most recently in Oregon and Washington there have been uh, measures on, on the ballots that have required the labeling of foods that can contain genetically modified uh, organisms. Um, and so it's, it's a very kind of hot topic in science and in biology and in, um, in society. Um, GMOs are possible because the amino acid sequence of polypeptides, of proteins, um, that is translated is maintained when genes are transferred from one organism to another. And this is all because the genetic code is universal. Each living species on the planet, its DNA is made up of four different types of nucleotides adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Those four different nucleotides are put together in different orders or different sequences or different amounts, and that's what creates all of the wide diversity of life on planet. It's just the combination of those four different nucleotides. Because they're all the same, because living species are all made up of the same genetic material, the same genetic material is used, it's possible to take the gene from one species and transfer it to another because that genetic code is universal. And so there's quite a few different uses of GMOs. Um, and one of those, for example, would be uh, inducing salt tolerance in tomato plants, um, the synthesis of beta carotene in rice. And beta carotene is the, the inactive form of the precursor to vitamin A. And so rice has been genetically modified. It's called golden rice to be able to, to have or produce vitamin A. And so in countries where a large proportion of the, the daily calories are coming from rice and there's an inability to ingest enough vitamin A, by eating or consuming this golden rice, the idea then is that these individuals, these people would be able to get their vitamin A just by eating the rice. Um, there's been a lot of debate on whether this is successful or not, but that, that was the original idea. Another form or use of GMOs is herbicide resistance in crop plants. By discovering some natural herbicide um, pest resistance uh, uh, in, in some different species and some bacteria species and genetically modifying the crops, the crops could then be sprayed with pesticide and not, um, uh, and, that's, and that spraying of pesticide would not have an effect on them. Uh, and a final example is the induction of, of factor 9 human blood clotting in sheep milk. And so this would then allow um, uh, this human blood clotting um, to be consumed via sheep milk. Um, so there's lots of different 
uses of GMOs, and, and we probably haven't even really scratched the surface of, of how we could use GMOs um, in quite a few different ways. There's lots of pros and cons to the use of GMOs um, in crops specifically. There's a potential for an increased crop efficiency, herbicide tolerance as, as previously talked about, improved crop quality, and also the production of biofuels. Some of the potential cons of this um, would include inadvertent transfer of uh, allergens, unforeseen effects on non-target organisms, and the escaping of modified genes. And we've actually seen this happen um, here in Oregon. We've seen situations in where some of these modified genes have been planted in a single uh, farm or, or, or field, and those modified genes have then been found in other fields of, of the same or different species. And so that kind of is a cause for concern. Um, one of the other big concerns is we don't really know what effect GMOs have, both on our health for crops that we eat or for the environment, because they really haven't been around that long. So we're not really sure exactly what's going to happen. And so that's also a cause for concern. Getting back to the topic of cloning, it is possible to clone organisms. And this is probably most um, popular in the cloning of, of Dolly the sheep. Uh, that you've probably heard about. Cloning at the embryo stage is, is taking uh, pluripotent cells, um, separating them, and grown in surrogate mothers. Cloning through differentiated cells was first conducted by John Gruden and frogs, and in this situation the nucleus from, adults, from an adult cell was removed and transplanted into the egg uh, of a cell without a nucleus. And this allows for specific characteristics to be selected because you could select the nucleus and then transplant that into an egg cell without the nucleus. Um, in differentiated cell cloning, it allows characteristics to be selected, but it's really, really difficult in mammals. It's extremely difficult in mammals. So this is probably not something that's going to be a possibility in the, in the near future. The more common cloning technique in animal cells is called nuclear transportation. Um, and in this situation, the adult cell is taken uh, in this situation with the, with, with the sheep. An adult cell is taken from the udder and it was placed in a low nutrient concentration to differentiate, um, uh, to, to, re to remove the differentiation, to basically make it a stem cell that be could become any different types of cells. Nuclei removed from an unfertilized egg and then the nucleus from that adult cell was put into the egg uh, and combined. That embryo is then injected into the surrogate mother and so in the diagram we see this here, donor nucleus, that nucleus is then put into an egg cell that's had the nuclei removed. That cell then goes on to develop, starting to become an embryo, it's implanted into a surrogate mother, and then a cloned lamb. We get a cloned lamb. And this is actually how Dolly uh, the sheep was made. So getting back to looking at the topic of, of GMOs, um, the, the question then is how do we, how can we get a gene um, into another organism. And as we talked about, when transferring genes between species, the amino acid sequence of polypeptides is unchanged because genetic code is universal. And again, all organisms have the guanine, cytosine, adenine, thymine, a rear cell, and RNA. One of the ways that genes can be transferred is some, through, through process uh, using something called a plasmid. And uh, e. coli can t contain plasmids, which are small circles or, or uh, chunks of DNA in a small circle. And bacteria use um, plasmids to exchange d genes so that they, and they actually naturally absorb them and incorporate them into their own circular DNA. Um, and so we can use this as a way to transfer DNA. We can use plasmids as a way to transfer DNA between species. And how this works is the plasmids can be removed and they can be cleaved or cut by restric restriction enzymes at a specific target area. Once that DNA has been cut, DNA from another organism using the same restriction enzymes um, can be then inserted into that plasmid using DNA ligase. And then that recombinant plasmid can then in be inserted into new host cells and cloned. So we can produce multiple copies of this. So an, a here's a nice image that helps to kind of illustrate this process. Here's our, our, uh, our bacteria cell, and here's the plasmid. And so the plasmid is removed um, from the bacterium, and it, the tDNA in this case is cut out by a restriction enzyme. So this portion of the DNA of the plasmid is removed. Um, this is cut out. And then the foreign DNA is inserted into the, the 
tDNA of the plasmid. So this is representing the chunk of DNA that we wanted to put in there. The plasmid then is reinserted into the bacteria, and the bacteria is then used to insert the, the, the specific gene, the tDNA carrying the foreign gene, um, into a cell. And in this case, that cell is a, is a plant cell. And so when that plant cell then develops and grows, um, it has that, that, that gene, um, and it can express it as a new trait. And one of uh, the really kind of wild and cool new ways that, that biotechnology has been used is uh, some different scientists and researchers have actually used this genetic modification to produce plants and trees that glow. You would think, well, why would, what would be the purpose of that? Um, but the researchers doing this are, are trying to produce a way to naturally light paths and walkways. And by inserting glowing genes, the plants and trees are able to do this. It's pretty wild, actually, when you think about it. These are a couple, just a couple of the different ways that biotechnology and new technology in biology has been able to be used to really enhance and um, make human lives better. Um, some of this genetic modification then brings into the question, and something that we'll talk about in class, is whether or not we should be doing this. Should we be genetically modifying organisms? And also brings up the question of what's going to happen in the future. We're not exactly sure. There's some definite positives and there's some p definite some uh, potential negatives um, and and we're not really sure which outweighs the other uh, but but these are definitely some interesting uh, new techniques and abilities that we have because of, of advances in technology and our understanding of biology